of San Diego College of Ayurveda. Welcome to our series on Ayurvedic cooking. Today, we're going to make a fresh coconut chutney for Pitta Prakriti. Fresh chutneys are very easy to make. Basically, there's no cooking involved. You just take fresh ingredients and you can blend them up using a food processor or blender. So, because we're making this coconut chutney for Pitta Prakriti, and Pitta Prakriti sometimes suffers from excess heat, we're going to use a cooling herb. We're going to use fresh mint. Welcome to our herb garden, and we're going to collect some fresh mint today. Mint is good for acidity, acid reflux, and aids digestion. This mint grows all year round, so we'll take some of the top leaves from each plant. This is the first of our fresh ingredients. Let's continue going over the ingredients list. Next, we'll want to use at least one bunch of fresh cilantro. Later, we're going to go over some special washing techniques that are useful for cilantro. For this chutney, we're going to use a white coconut. White coconuts are not completely dry and mature, and the flesh is a bit softer. Next, we're going to use one whole green jalapeno chili. Jalapeno chilies are a bit milder than most other chilies. Next, we're going to use one large chunk of fresh ginger. Ginger aids in digestion and has anti-inflammatory and antibacterial properties. We'll also use one quarter cup of fresh yogurt. Yogurt adds moisture and also has cooling properties, which is good for pitta. One tablespoon of raw sugar, turbinado sugar or sucanat, helps counterbalance a little bit of the bitterness. One teaspoon salt is added to help bring out the flavor of the natural ingredients. One small pinch of asafoetida or hing. Hing can be purchased at most Indian grocery stores and helps reduce gassiness and bloating. One half teaspoon of black pepper. We prefer to use whole peppercorns and grind them in this mortar and pestle. You can also use powdered black pepper. You'll also need a food processor or a powerful blender to grind up the fresh ingredients. We want to make sure that the cilantro is properly washed since it grows well in somewhat sandy soil and some of that soil might be sticking to the stalks of cilantro. We're going to cut off the lower third of the stalks, put them in a bowl, and rinse them in cold water. We want to rinse them a few times until we don't see any more dirt in the bottom of the bowl. Now we don't see any more dirt in the bottom of the bowl, so we're done. Now we're going to crack our coconut. Hold it over a bowl so you can save the coconut water. The coconut water has electrolytes and is very cooling. We just use a hard object to crack it several times around its circumference until it opens up. Once it opens up, we'll take the shell and we may hit it a few more times so that it might crack again. And then we can use a knife that's relatively dull but flexible to pry the pieces of coconut out of the shell. Now that we've gotten all of the pieces of coconut out of the shell and checked to make sure there are no pieces of shell sticking to them, we're ready to add other ingredients and grind everything up. Ginger has fiber in it, and we'd like to cut across the fiber to make sure that it blends up properly and doesn't clump up in the blender or food processor. Green chilies, on the other hand, are very easy to blend up. We'll just cut the stem part off, but be very careful not to touch your skin to the exposed part of the chili as it can cause burning and irritation. Our food processor is a bit on the small side, so we're just going to put the mint leaves in and leave the cilantro out for now. We'll add it as it's grinding up.
here's what we have so far. We have our ingredients partly blended up, but we still have some coconut pieces that haven't been blended up. Let's go ahead and add the dry ingredients. We're going to add our black pepper and grind it in the mortar and pestle. We're also going to use a small amount of asafoetida or hing. One teaspoon of salt should be just about enough to bring out the natural flavors of the fresh ingredients. Now we'll add our yogurt. Yogurt adds cooling properties and also allows the ingredients to blend more easily. We're adding a very small amount of unrefined sugar, which helps take the edge off the chilies. We'll mix everything together just a bit and put it back in the food processor for a final run. And we're done. We can garnish the final product with some of the nitlis we saved before. This will keep in the fridge for about a week in a tightly closed container. To learn more about Ayurveda and for this and many other recipes, visit San Diego College of Ayurveda.com.